Okay, so just wanted to visit with you, Justin, a little bit about the Senate Ag Committee hearing today. Um, very interesting hearing, I thought. Appreciate you being there to speak for cattle producers in our region. Um, I was glad to be there. It was a very interesting uh, uh, hearing. Yeah, and so there were a few things I heard um, as I was watching it um, that I thought you might want to elaborate on, or you could even um, tell us again, you know, some of the um, comments that you shared in the hearing, because not everybody was able to listen to it. Um, to tell us what your thoughts are. There was a lot of um, discussion from some of the other testimony providers about um, increasing packing capacity and that kind of being hopefully the silver bullet to help with our um, cattle pricing issues right now. What are your thoughts on that? Do we need to increase packing capacity? And would that alone um, be enough to help our cattle feeders and producers right now? So definitely, yes, I think we do need to increase uh, uh, shackle space, but I do not think it's a silver bullet alone. And I don't think just increasing shackle space will get it done. Those. Uh, small and medium sized packers have got to be sustainable. They've got to be viable in the marketplace. And if they're not, then, then we haven't done anything. And, and, and if we increase shackle space and it's only to the big four packers, I also don't think that does us any good because then they even control and influence more cattle. So I do think we need more shackle space, but it's got to be done in a way that uh, it ensures that we have more competition and, and that we get more players in the market, not less players and just giving them more market share. And you referenced something in the hearing. Um, I remember you talking on this issue about how it, we have seen in the past sometimes packers, new packers start up, um, but as for them getting their product actually into the marketplace when they're comp competing with the big four packers that can lower their price um, when they want to, um, I guess, you know, what's your concern there with that? Well, it definitely is. And, and we have a real fine example right there in South Dakota in the Aberdeen plant and, and uh, Senator Rounds and, and, and then Governor Rounds, when they got that plant going, had a great plan in place. They wanted to uh, get into a niche market and work with uh, just South Dakota beef and, and try to make that go. And, and uh, they found out that they could get it up and running. They could get the cattle in there. But then all of a sudden, there's nowhere to sell the meat because the big four said, no, no, we're not going to have you uh, cutting into our market share. And, and they squeezed them out. And, and, and that's how that happened. And we're on our third owner in the Demcota plant in Aberdeen. And that's a pretty good model. If you look at history in these regional plants, it takes one, two, three, maybe the third owner finally makes money. And that, that scares me when we just everybody starts saying, let's just build plants. Okay. That's fine. I get it and we need it, but we've got to be sustainable. It doesn't do any good if we can't keep them running. Right. And that plant wasn't even private. I mean, there was a lot of tax dollars that went into that plant and still. Public. Yep. Yep. Okay. And they hit it a tough time, you know, but. Uh... Right. But it's, a, as you said, kind of maybe a, a example and warning to what can happen, particularly for producers maybe trying to put up some of their hard-earned dollars to to invest in something like that that may or may not work for them. Um, okay, and there was a question at the very end that actually never was answered. Um, Senator Hyde-Smith was asking, and I don't know that I got her full question, but she was asking about the, I believe the um, move from GYPSA to be directly under USDA and then I think she was asking you all what your opinion was as far as DOJ working more closely with USDA. Um, in, I'm assuming she meant in view of the fact that, um, the, that GYPSA maybe doesn't have the legs that it used to, for lack of better words. Um, and I was wondering if you might want to hit on that now. Um, just that concept I think she was getting at was the DOJ working hopefully more closely with you. So I, I didn't take that question on just because I wasn't hundred percent sure, just like you said, what uh, she was asking. I, I do have an opinion on, I, I think that if the Senator Rounds and Senator Tester's bill of, of uh, getting some teeth into the DOJ, getting them subpoena power, uh, one of the ideas that U.S. Cattlemen has floated to them is to also have a working group of industry folks that have knowledge of it 
to help with those investigations and, and give them background at least on how some of this works. I think we could see in the hearing today too that when when we we only focus on academics that we get very different views than we we have in the real world situations of how it actually works and and so I think that's why we we really support center around center tester and the DOJ investigation and and we would love if they can work uh, industry working groups in to help them and make sure that we can frame it in the way that needs to be done so. I don't know if that's exactly what you were asking me, and I wasn't sure what, to, I, I would love to answer a question, but I also didn't want to walk down uh, somewhere where I didn't have any knowledge. So um, hopefully that gets you what you needed. Yeah, and I, I kind of felt that way that maybe everybody was a little unsure of what she was asking there. So, yep, that definitely makes sense. Um, uh, another question, sort of going back to some of the things you all talked about, um, it was, of course, AMAs were discussed a lot and there was some differing viewpoints on how important they are to the industry, um, whether they are sort of bringing dollars to the producer or taking them away. I feel like there's a little bit of a um, pull there in opinions, possibly. Um, I guess if you want to share with me what you think about that and maybe specifically to the thought of... Um, do cattle feeders and producers that have made that investment to develop the best cattle that they can, whether it's surely through genetics, um, in addition to good feeding programs, mineral, all of that, you know, they've done everything right. Do they need to have an AMA in order to realize um, profit for those? Or um, are there other options? Or is there a possibility that these AMAs may even be working the opposite and not um, giving money back where it's due to those that have um, that are producing the top quality products? So I think that AMAs have a place. I, I, I'm not against AMAs. I think that there's other ways to do it. You know, way back when I was a kid, and I can remember people talking about this a lot. Uh, when you turn cattle in, they would grade them. And, and it used to be said it was a joke around. It was called grade and steal. And I mentioned that in the uh, hearing today. And the reason being is if you turned them in and the packer's running the grade system, he is deciding what the ups are you get. So how do you know you're getting enough? Right. The, that quality product should get more. I, I totally agree with Mr. Gardner's testimony today on that. But there are other ways to do it. The packer has gotten through efficiencies, gotten rid of all the buyers. They don't come out and look at the cattle. They don't find out who has better cattle. That He's right about that. There should be a separation of price. And it shouldn't be that Kerry Stadheim's cattle are worth exactly what mine are. Uh, there are genetic differences and, and there are feed differences and, and they should be able to pay for them. But that shouldn't be all on the onus of the producer. That should be left to the packer. Uh, and, and you should be able to make choices. If there are grids out there that you think your cattle fit, then you should be able to do that. But we shouldn't be hanging the hats of every grid and every AMA on uh, price discovery of the cash market, which is so thin, and they can buy the ones they want that don't even fit a grid or that they're lower quality cattle, and that's how the base price starts. That's what I wish that, that I could get across to some of those guys that love the AMAs, because I'm, I'm not saying we shouldn't have them. I'm saying we need to be able to have that base price found out in a more robust, true price discovery with more cattle involved and, and, and the same kind of cattle they're selling. And, and the other thing I think that gets lost in that is the packer doesn't have, he can bid, with, if everybody right now, everybody just, they have done such a job of making everybody think on Thursday at two o'clock, they're bidding 119. If you don't take it, you get no shackle space. There's nothing to say that if they really like Kerry Stadheim's cattle, they know they're good, that the base market is 119. They can't come out. So I'm going to give you, Kerry, 124. Right. That can be done. That's an AMA without having to give them all the onus and, and you taking all the risk. Right. I, I just think there's other ways to do it. And I think the Packer's done a, a crazy good job of, of his way of marketing. And he's forced it upon these guys for so long that, they, that, that they're just spoon fed it. And the, the few guys that sell in the cash market now are, are, are holding all the burden for the guys that have uh, kind of sold out. And 
And every time those AMAs, they give them those, that's more captive supply. That means they know the cattle are committed to them. They know they're going to get them. And when they can get to a certain number of captive supply, then they can do what they want in the market. They don't have to go out. I really disagreed and didn't get to say in testimony today with Mr. Gardner's statement that if we had a thousand packers out there on today's market, he said it'd be the same. I vehemently disagree with that. If we had a thousand packers and we had box beef at 335, they would be climbing over everyone's cattle to pay somewhere way closer to that box beef trade than we are today. Their idea that shackle space and the only way that we can make money in the cattle market is when we have uh, less cattle than they have shackle space and then we're going to get paid for it. That is a ridiculous, ridiculous way to think about how we should uh, uh, sell our cattle or how an industry should work, in my opinion. I was going to ask you about the comment about a thousand bidders because I, I thought you may have a, a, comp, a thought or two on that. 